Uh, so, uh, good morning, guys. It's uh, and thank you guys for having us. It's uh, it's a blessing for us to be here and to um, just be worshiping with you guys. Um, the people wearing the funky clothing up at the front are uh, I'm Nathan, and this is Anna, uh, and we are the Glens. And um, uh, we're just going to tell you a little bit about our story and what we will be doing and about Liberia. So um, who are we? We are Christ followers. Um, we're Marylanders. Okay, go Terps. Um, but we met at the University of Maryland, actually. And we have a deep passion for agriculture. Um, and... Uh, we are teachers, and we have a deep passion for education and using um, our knowledge and skills and our, our heart to, to teach. Um, so I guess let me just tell you a little bit about my sort of testimony and, and, and my calling to Liberia. Um, I consider myself a pretty young Christian, only um, really getting into a relationship with God uh, about seven years ago when I was 21. Um, but I, I grew up in the church. Um, I went to church uh, until I was eight years old, and then um, pretty quickly I, uh, I, uh, I got sidetracked. Um, I, at eight years old, I started playing travel baseball, and uh, anybody knows about youth sports and travel baseball, if you get into it, it's, it can be time-consuming, and uh, there was doubleheaders on Sundays. And so, uh, and, and we'd have to travel to games, and so very quickly, um, baseball was in, and God was out. Uh, baseball was more important than God, and that's sort of how my life went um, from 8 to 21. Um, now, I, uh, I, I had friends. I, I um, found my passion in agriculture. Uh, I got good grades, got into the University of Maryland, um, and, uh, and was doing well. Um, but there was a vision that was missing for my future. There was a direction and an initiative and a drive that was missing for me. And, um, and it, was, it was a purpose and a meaning to life that was missing for me. And uh, at, at the age of 21, my last semester, um, at university, um, uh, I, I started to develop a crush on a girl, <laughs> and um, and then I, I started to develop friendships with people that were in the same situation that I was in um, in college, the same environment, um, but they they showed me that how it's 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 okay and to be confident and strong in your faith, and. Um, all of those people together sort of led me back to uh, Christ. And, um, and from there, I started to, to develop a relationship with God and started to realize, you know, how much he loves, loved and loves me and will love me. And, and then I started to realize what love really was. And um, he started to chip away at my, my heart of stone. Um, and for the next seven years, that's... Um, that's what he's been doing. Um, in Romans 12, chapter 2, it says, uh, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect his will really is. Um, during this last year, in Agricor, um, in Liberia, with with Agricor, I uh, God God worked on me harder and more and quick more uh, and more quickly than he ever had before in the last five years before that, um, and uh, and I'm thankful for that experience. And and during that experience, I I, I saw and met so many people, I, and I saw a nation of of Liberians that that were eager to learn. And we're eager to, um, to sort of work hard. Um, and they, they know what American farms look like. We were specifically working in agriculture. And they, they know what American farms look like. Um, and they were eager for 
people like us and other development workers and organizations like USAID or um, other non-government organizations to, to bring technologies and practices and tools so that they can, they can get started on, 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 on that, that dream that they had, that eagerness that they had. Um, but you know what I saw? I saw what I consider to be too much failure in development work. Um, I saw a lot of, um, and it, it was, there was evidence, there was, there was um, barns at their, their country's research, agriculture research farm, which were empty because of, uh, because uh, of failure with genetics of goats. Um, and, uh, and what I realized was that our, our human made plans um, in development work was, was no match to the corruption and the oppression and the brokenness that Liberia was going through and had gone through. Okay, it was, it's deep. And um, I realized that our human made plans were no match for the devil that was there in Liberia. Um, and is all around. And, uh, and so um, it was through this process with Agricor, which is, you know, it was not a day, it was not a one day thing. It was, it was a long and drawn out process in this past year that I heard my calling uh, to, to go back to Liberia um, and, and do agriculture missionary work. I realized that just as I was a young boy and then um, growing older, putting baseball first, um, some Liberians and some development workers were putting technologies and tools and uh, practices first. Um, and I realized that I could have a I could have a hand in coming together with them, and uh, and and bringing people together so that there's a agricultural and personal transformation for the, for, for the future of, of Liberia. And, um, and so that's my story. Um, Anna has a uh, slightly different story for hers, um, and uh, we invite you to uh, ask her about it after the service or any time that you, you see us. So just to give you guys a little bit of information about Liberia, um, where we are, it's a population of four million. It's right on the coast there in West Africa. And about 80% of people live in poverty. So that's less than $1.25 per day that they live off of. Um, and the US government and development agencies have this scale called the HDI index, or Human Development Index. And so it's a measurement of how the country is doing in their development. Um, healthcare is factored in, education, um, literacy rates, all those things. And so Liberia is ranked uh, number 177 out of 188 countries that are ranked. So Liberia is very low on the development index uh, scale. 75% of their population is illiterate, and that is um, partially as a result of the civil wars that they've experienced in their past. They had wars from 1990 to 2003, where a quarter million to a half a million people um, were killed and people were displaced and um, women were harmed as well, women and children. And then as they were recovering from that war in 2003, it ended, they're recovering, all the development agencies came back in, they're working to build up. Ebola came in, as you guys might remember, in 2014 and slammed the country again. Um, so from 2014 to 2016, they lost um, thousands of lives and again, development agencies pulled out again. And so Liberia is still reeling from the effects of the war and from the effects of Ebola, um, these physical ailments that have been in their country. And then just to give you a little bit of um, information about the religious practices there, it's Christian, Muslim, as well as tribal practices, kind of all mixed together, um, which sometimes doesn't always fit very well. Um, next. So last year, we were working with an organization called AgriCorps. Some of you guys probably remember us standing up here a year ago and telling you about that, how excited we were to be a part of that. And like Nathan said, we learned a lot through that. Um, we gained a lot of knowledge about the culture there, about agriculture there. And we had an amazing time working with the youth there. Um, we taught 
in a high school, agriculture classes, and we also did um, after school programs with the, with the youth called 4-H and FFA. Some of you guys know about that because our family is always talking about 4-H. <laughs> um, <laughs> come to the 4-H fair, everything. Um, those organizations are really, really vital um, to kids in the U.S. for developing their leadership skills, their responsibility skills, management skills, and they're just as important, even more important to students abroad. And so we had a really good time working with our students in those areas. And then next year. So next year we'll be working with a faith-based organization, a mission called Hope in the Harvest. Um, they are uh, have, they are teamed with a uh, a college uh, called Liberia International Christian College, uh, and they've created the agriculture department that is there. Um, and uh, they're doing amazing things already. They're five years old into their their vision. Um, and they have a uh, they have a, a truly God-sized vision um, for the for the future, and and we're happy to be a part of it. Um, this is the Ark. It's the Agriculture Research Center that they've they've built in five years. Before that, it was um, it was Bush, and um, and inside there are two classrooms and a um, and a lab that can serve uh, Liberian farmers, um, and then there are uh, there are rooms for. Uh, um, for, uh, for study and as well as uh, um, mission trip opportunities as well. Um, surrounding this facility uh, is a, uh, a research and demonstration farm. Um, not a big farm, but uh, uh, has a variety of educational opportunities for the students um, with a lot of different livestock species and a lot of different crop um, species as well. Um, next. Uh, at Hope in the Harvest and in the Agriculture Department at LICC, uh, which is the, the, the department that they've made the, the Agriculture Department for, the college, um, they, we, we will use a, a curriculum called Farming God's Way. And Farming God's Way um, takes into account uh, management and technology and biblical principles and puts them all together. Um, Farming God's Way is a way to holistically um, invest into a, a person, um, the heart of a person, uh, while also giving them practical knowledge and skills to go out and, and, and help to feed their nation. Um, and uh, it's, it's something that is started by a, uh, an African, I believe in Zimbabwe. And uh, so he went through... Um, his testimony is really amazing. He went through some troubling times in his life. Um, he was a farmer um, uh, growing tobacco, and uh, you know, he, he realized that uh, he, was, he, was, he was not really, he was having faith in the created and not the creator. Um, and uh, his, also, his kid also asked him, why are we growing tobacco when... Uh, when uh, um, uh, when smoking is, is bad and stuff like that. So um, they, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a history behind that, and now their, their farm is, has gone completely to using Farming God's Way principles, sustainable agriculture, um, investing in the soil, okay, and trusting God that, that uh, um, the soil and the, the environment around us are, are going to, uh, to provide for the family and for the surrounding area. Um, and they've gone from doing just a few acres on Farming God's Way, with Farming God's Way principles to doing um, o over a thousands of acres, spreading out to villages surrounding them, doing Farming God's Way. Um, and it's a, it's a true curriculum that, uh, that uh, uh, um, puts its faith in, in patience and its, its faith in, in, in God that God will provide. So uh, one of the reasons why we, we, we really feel a deep connection between our love for agriculture and our love for God, and um, I think it's so complex that I don't really understand it all um, totally, but um, it's, it's, uh, it's feeding people physically while feeding people spiritually. And um, right now, uh, Liberia is struggling, struggling to feed themselves physically um, and uh, and. We think it can, it, the, the physical part can be taken care of if we also take care of the spiritual part. Um, in Liberia, the sta their staple food is rice. They would eat rice every, every day, every meal, if they could afford it. Um, 
Liberia, the nation itself, only produces 30% of the rice that they, they consume. Okay, so 70% of that is being imported, 70% of that, that, that money is, is going out of the country. Um, and if we, we don't have a number on this, but if we had to take a guess for all agricultural products, we would, we would think that the, the, the number is higher than 70%. Um, there's a, uh, and you can see um, after the service um, that uh, uh, we have some ground pea or peanuts that very much looks like we got it in a market, a local market, very much looks like it's from a local farm, um, but it is not. It was imported as well. And so uh, we were just amazed at how much, um, how much uh, their opportunity there is in, in agriculture for the youth of Liberia. Um, so this is the future of Liberia. These are the students that we worked with last year. Um, we had an amazing time working with them and seeing how they um, became and had a passion for their own country and for agriculture and moving forward in that. It's not about us going there and helping them. It's about us investing in them so that they know that they can be the ones who change the future of their country, that change the legacy that they're leaving behind. So these are some of the faces um, of the kids that we worked with just so that you can see them and um, just connect with them as well. We loved working with them. And then I want to show the next slide there. Um, it's kind of hard to read up there, so I'll read it off my phone if you don't mind. Um, so in Liberia, a lot of times, agriculture is seen as the poor man's job. It's the job that nobody wants. It's the job that is for dumb people. It's the job that um, is not honorable in any means. It's a job where you're just going to lose all your money. But that's not true. Agriculture, as we know in the U.S., can be a place where science is used, creativity is needed, business management is needed, and you get to feed people with that. Okay? And so a lot of times we're battling this idea that agriculture is not worth it in the country. Okay? And by the end of the year, um, one of my students posted this on her Facebook, and it almost made me cry because she was starting to get it. Nathan and I were always telling the students, agriculture is something that you can use to change your country. You can be a changer in your country, and agriculture can do that. So I just want to read this little quote um, from my student, Gifty. It says, somebody asked me, what are, what are you studying at BWI? I said, I am studying agriculture. The person said, did your parents force you to? Because that happens a lot there. I said, no. Um, they said, agriculture is nothing in this country. You are studying it for nothing. I told them who will make it for our own who will make it important in our own country. We ourselves. The country needs us. We need to work and produce our own food. We need to go back to the soil. Everybody sitting in office cannot solve all our problems. I will study this course to the best of my abilities and to all my friends out there who are studying agriculture. Nobody should stop you or discourage you. We can make a difference. May God guard us in the struggles. So just being able to see the difference um, in the heart of my students from the beginning of the year to the end of the year and see how they are so excited about being a change in their country and not just looking you know, elsewhere for the change. They know that they have it within themselves. That is really cool to me, and that's what I want to continue doing, and I want to help them see that it's more than just agriculture. It's changing the country in the way that we, in our relationship with God, too. There's so many people there, as I said earlier, I lifted up prayer, that don't know um, God. They only know the, the tribal devil that they worship to. There's a lot of devil, devil worshiping in Liberia, and we believe that this is keeping them um, and holding them back and enslaving them from not only relationships with their friends and each other, but relationships with God and the fulfillment and freedom that comes from that. And so that is why we are so excited and passionate about um, returning to Liberia and investing not only in agricultural transformation, but personal transformation. Um, so we are so excited that we invite you guys to be a part of it as well. One way that you can be a part of that is through prayer. Um, we know that the forces um, of the devil and corruption and, and brokenness and poverty are much stronger than any um, human force. And we know that we need to rely on God um, in all things. And we encourage you guys to join us as members of our team to be praying um, for the people of Liberia, to be praying for us, and to be praying for um, a revolution in that country, for agriculture, as well as for personal transformation. And then secondly, we also invite you guys to become prayer partners, uh, or to become financial partners with us. We invite you to pray about that commitment. 
God says that he will provide for all of our needs. He promises that in the Bible. And he doesn't just say that he's going to provide for me, Anna, my needs. He said that he's going to provide for everybody in the world's needs. How? How is he going to do that? He's going to do that through the body of Christ. He's God. He could drop down rice. He could drop down manna today. Sometimes I wish he would because I see so many people around me in Liberia who are hungry. And it hurts my heart. And I wish he would do that. But God didn't design it that way. He designed it so we, the body of Christ, could be involved. He's not, um, he didn't run out of resources. He's not lazy. He, doesn't, he didn't forget to care about the people of Liberia. He cares about them so deeply, and he designed it so we, as the body of Christ, could all be invested in caring for each other in that way. I think what um, Pastor Kate was saying this morning about fellowship, how important that is, God didn't just design us for a relationship with him and him alone. He designed us to have fellowship so that we could be taking care of each other. When someone dies, we can be there and we can be praying for that person. When someone has a baby, we can be there with them celebrating. And when there's needs in our community and around the world, he designed it so that we could all be a part of that, a family um, and a team in serving that. And so we invite you guys to pray about becoming financial partners in this ministry with us. Um, The second slide here just shows some more of the specifics about the needs that we have right now. Um, We're about 50% of the way funded um, before we go, and so we're looking for partners who are able to commit $25 a month, $50 a month, $75, $100, whatever that is. And so we invite you guys to pray about that and join us in that if you um, feel called and led in that way. And then lastly, we invite you guys to spread the word. Um, We think that what God is doing in Liberia is really awesome, and the fact that Hope in the Harvest is investing in feeding people's stomachs as well as people's souls. Um, We are so excited about the work that Hope in the Harvest is doing there. And so we want you guys to um, join us in that excitement, follow us on our blog, share with other people who you think may be interested um, in learning more about this ministry. So we invite everyone to be a member of our team. We know that this is not something that we can do alone. We need the fellowship of the body of Christ. And so we are really excited to invite everyone to be part of our team in that way. Um, So we thank you for kind of letting us share a little bit about our heart for Liberia, and we just want to end this time with prayer um, for Liberia. Father God, thank you so much for um, for bringing us together and, and uh, allowing us to worship together and, and, and talk about you together and, and, um, and just to get into your word, God. Um, Father, thank you for being so awesome and so powerful and, and that, that you are the, the God of, of us here in Cockeysville and you are the God of Charlottesville and you are the God of Liberia and you're the God of the universe. And uh, just thank you for, for allowing us to be in a relationship with you and to, to be able to tap into your power um, and, and into, um, into your spirit, God. Um, Father, we just pray that uh, uh, together that we, we can go out into this world and, uh, and, and, and live in circle and live with people and in fellowship and, um, and that uh, as the body of Christ, we can, uh, we can provide for each other um, and that uh, we can let each other grow and, and, and allow each other to be transformed um, by you. Um, and Father God, just uh, thank you for, again, for time this morning to, to worship you. And um, thank you for uh, um, just uh, all, all of this, uh, the, the hearts in this room, God, in your son's name.